everyone, so today I'm doing my first ever watercolour portrait, which is pretty intimidating because skin is like one of the most important parts of portrait in my opinion, and it's also really difficult to do in new mediums especially, and I've never painted skin ever in watercolour, so this took, this was a bit of a learning curve. This is a portrait of a girl I know in a beauty group I'm in, and her name is Lauren, I'll link her Instagram down below, and she is absolutely gorgeous, so I painted her, not in photorealism, I did kind of warp isn't the right word, adjust her face so that it suited my style a bit more. It's not like the world's best portrait of Lauren, but it's a... It's just a painting that is inspired by her and one of the gorgeous makeup looks she did. You've probably noticed if you've seen a few of my videos or looked at my Instagram, which I realise I don't actually think I've ever mentioned in a video before, so if you want to follow me on Instagram, I do have it, and it's at kittykins.illustration. So yeah, I do a lot of like female portraits and I also really like nature and I do like linking those so all these beautiful flowers she had on her face with this lovely pink makeup look I thought was absolutely gorgeous and I asked if I could paint her and I felt really awkward doing it <laughs> it felt a bit creepy but I just had to paint this because I thought it was absolutely beautiful and she is beautiful and she's very talented you should really definitely look at her Instagram, which I'll, like I said, I'll link below if you are interested in more creative makeup looks, because she's really talented at normal makeup, but she also does a lot more creative things, not just a standard look. The eye does look a bit creepy at the moment, but it looks better when I add eyelashes later on, so <laughs> don't worry about that. I did the outlines with a pink. Prismacolor colorways, by the way, so just kind of soft outlines. I didn't want anything too harsh, but also I wasn't going to just freehand paint her face for my first ever painting, so. <laughs> I've also never painted roses before, and they are quite difficult, but they're definitely fun, and I definitely started getting the hang of it. I'm using my Winsor & Newton Cotman set, it's the 45 set, I think it's the studio set, so it's got all of the colours. I didn't use all of them by any means, and you definitely don't need to buy a full set like that, it was just a good deal, so it's like almost no price difference between £24 and £45, so. And then I'm just using kind of random brushes. I have loads of different brands of brushes and I use them all equally. Whatever is the right size for the job, I don't really care. I don't have a favourite brand. The only issue I've ever, I've ever had with any of my brushes is kind of shedding, but after you've used them a couple of times, none of them shed anyway, so. This purple one and the dark red one below, they were particularly difficult ones to paint because they're so dark. I couldn't see the distinct shapes on the roses and it was really difficult to shade them and everything. So I mostly... <laughs> I mostly did a bit of detail with the watercolour, but I mostly added the shadows and highlights with the pencils afterwards, which is what I like to do with my watercolour pieces. It just adds in the extra detail I couldn't quite get with a brush. And I'm using my heat gun to dry each layer, otherwise I'd be here all day. <laughs> I'm 
She's got these gorgeous gems all over her face and the flowers, and I add a bit more detail onto those later on to make them look a bit more gem-like. So now I'm doing her hair, and again, this is the first time I've done hair with watercolours, and that's also really scary because I'm so used to the way I do it with Kothics. Um, but I think I could employ a pretty similar method here, particularly as I was going over with pencil, so it wasn't as difficult as I thought it would be. I'm also really not very well practiced in doing blonde hair, so that was a bit different for me, because they just have so many different tones like in their hair, and the difference from the ends to the roots, it's, all, it's a lot more complex than say a brunette. I didn't really know what to do for the background, so I decided that I was going to do like complementary, slightly desaturated purple. So it complemented the hair quite nicely and it also matched in with the colours of the flowers. And then as I'd done the background and the hair, I realised that she was far too pale, so I then added another kind of quite transparent layer of skin tone on top just to deepen up her skin a little bit. I'm just adding in a few more details of the hair. And then... Okay, so here's where I had an issue. I'm doing the pencil even though I haven't taken her off the her. I haven't taken the piece off of the tile yet, because normally you can just cut the sides. I don't really know what happened, but I tried to cut the sides and it just wouldn't come off. So I did eventually do it, because I really like being able to rotate the piece easily when I'm doing pencil work, and when it's attached to a massive heavy tile, that is not ideal. Um, I'm adding it to my lashes here so she looks a bit less weird. So. <laughs> That was nice. Um, but yeah, so I think the glue from the gummed tape had leached into the paper and had like glued down all of the edges. As you can see here, this is the remains of the paper on my tile. You can see the back of the paper is really kind of like messed up because I basically had to scalp a little off the tile. <laughs> um, so it did warp the paper slightly, which is really annoying because the whole point of stretching is to not warp the paper. But, oh well, hopefully it won't happen again, because I don't really know what caused it, so if that has ever happened to you, please let me know how to prevent it, because I did nothing differently to how I normally stretch my paper, and I've never had this issue before. I've maybe had like one corner slightly glued down, but I've never had it that bad where literally every single edge was glued down and I had to actually cut off the entire piece. So I was using my polychromos to add in a bit more detail, add in a few of the stems and stuff, just little details that would have been really difficult to add with just paint. The eye looks so much better now she has eyelashes and a highlight. <laughs> And I think this is what really makes the hair look a lot better, is the pencil work. Kind of adding in a bit more detail to make it look like there are actually individual strands of hair. It definitely made me like the piece a lot more because I really felt like the hair wasn't like up to standard with the rest of it. And then I'm just going over the purple bit with a purple polychromo just to add a bit more texture into the background. 
I didn't want it to be too smooth because I wanted to show that the skin was smooth. So that's the finished piece. I hope you like it. If you have any tips for doing watercolour portraits and for not ruining your piece by gluing it to your tile, please let me know in the comments below and subscribe for more. And I hope you liked the video. Thank you so much for watching.